Let us turn our Bibles to the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 15. We will read from verse 21 to verse 28. Matthew chapter 15, from verse 21 to verse 28. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. Beloved, this is the word of God. This is the passage for our consideration this morning. A passage one can hardly read without some getting some feelings within you. And it has, it has to do with Jesus Christ during his earthly ministry. As this passage goes, at this time, Jesus Christ, I should say, perhaps strayed into Gentile territory. Strayed into Gentile territory because all along he's been ministering in Israel. From the north to the south. The northern part of Israel, then the province was Galilee, where Jesus Christ himself came from. Sometimes he crossed downwards through Samaria and came to Judea to Jerusalem, the capital itself. And since he started his ministry, he had Capernaum as his base. Capernaum is still in the northern region. Occasionally, he would come to Jerusalem, especially during festival times, and continued his ministry. As we all know from the Bible, he was a very familiar, very popular prophet. So he had a lot of titles. And because of the nature of his ministry, people came to see him, who he really was, destined by God to be the savior, the prophet from Galilee, the son of David, and many other titles. We are told in this short passage that on this occasion, Jesus Christ entered Gentile territory, Tyre and Sidon, that's Phoenicia. It's so usually very good when you have the map, as it were, uh, before you. Uh, Jerusalem and others were in the south. Samaria was somewhere central. Galilee was up the north. On the western side of Galilee, all, of all Israel, is the, the sea, that is coastline. Jesus Christ entered Tyre and Sidon, and Tyre and Sidon is just northern part of Galilee. In Israel, they would say the Galilee, Galilee was the northern part, but northern part of the northern part of Israel along the coast was Tyre and Sidon. These people were Gentiles, and Jesus Christ went there during his earthly ministry. And as we are told in the passage, a woman 
who is a native of that vicinity. It meant that he was a Canaanite, a Gentile. She came pleading. The words used by the NIV is crying out. She cried out, Lord, son of David, help me. These are the cries of somebody who is desperate. And she comes to Jesus Christ with this plea. It is important to take note of the titles that he uses to address Jesus. The first one is Lord. A Gentile calling Jesus Lord alone speaks volumes. Because even among his own people, the Israelites, not all of them accepted him as the Lord. And so for somebody who is a Gentile, and perhaps in those days to say, uh, and uh, was also a woman, to address him in that way was significant. And she did not only use Lord, she used another title which is more Jewish, son of David. And son of David for the Israelites was very significant because the king who comes out of the root of David, God's friend, the person to whom God pledged the uh, king kingdom forever and to his descendants, David. And so anybody by that title, in fact, nobody could, uh, as it were, uh, assign that title to himself or herself. And so for somebody to address Jesus as, or anybody as son of David meant that either she has heard people talking about it, or perhaps she herself believed that this woman or this man was a great man of God, God's savior, coming from the, stool of, uh, from the lineage of David, the super king of the Israelites. But in spite of these wonderful titles that this woman used, he, she was still a Canaan, Canaanite, a Gentile. And it is, it is very, sometimes, so they, a little difficult to understand why Jesus refused initially to respond to her. He said, Jesus answered no, not a word. There are people who come to Jesus Christ crying after him, but him and the likes have cried to Jesus. Jesus had invited them. Here is a woman who is in need. And then she comes crying, giving these superlative titles, yet Jesus does not speak. And when we are told that when the disciples observed that the man is not speaking, they came to, they came to him, hey, see her off. She's disturbing us. She's causing a lot, of, a lot of inconvenience for us. Do whatever you want to do to her and send her away so we can have our peace. The woman continued to cry, Lord. First it was Lord and son of David. Now it is Lord. She insisted on her faith. Lord, help me. My daughter is terribly distressed. Some demons are tormenting her, and her condition is not good at all. Lord, help me. It isn't, Lord, if you can, as sometimes some of the people who came pleading did. This one was insistent. Lord, help me. I know you can help me. You are Lord. You are the son of David. You can help me. Lord, help me. But in spite of all this, Jesus Christ opens the mouth now, and you listen to the words that he, he, he spoke. Oh, I was sent only to the lost house of Israel. Very discouraging words. You are a Canaanite. No. I was sent only to the lost house of Israel. Well, theologians will argue about this one. Why did Jesus use those words? Some would say, that he wanted to test her faith, whether she actually meant what she was saying. Others will say, no, Jesus meant his words. Because we also know that it was God's design, as it were, to save Israel and use Israel as a catalyst to, rece to receive the rest of the world. So initially, his focus was on Israel. But one will also ask a follow-up question and say, 
if he was only going to save Israel, why did he stray to die and sit down? Something you cannot conclude perfectly. And so Jesus Christ says this to the woman, and the woman still insists, yes, you are lost. You are sent to the uh, lost house of Israel. And in fact, you remember that one time when Jesus Christ sent his apostles, he gave them definite instructions. Don't go the way of the Gentiles at all. Not even through Samaria, your half-brothers. Be focused. He directed them directly where they should go. And he is almost repeating the same thing here. And then he goes on to say that, woman, you know that food, our bread that is to be given to the children, should not be taken and thrown to the dogs. Well, it, we are told that it's a, it was a well-known word that was used in the time, that uh, the Jews considered Gentiles as dogs. And so the woman understood it, but she remained insistent. She refused to rebel. She refused to be offended. She wasn't provoked at all. Rather, she insisted, yes, I know that when the dogs eat, uh, no, when the master eats on the table and the crumbs of bread fall down under the table, Yes, the, uh, the, the bread is meant for the children. But the crumbs that fall under the table, the dogs have, they are qualified to eat it. So if, 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 if the, the children of the kingdom, so to say, the Israelites, have eaten of the good news, whatever it is, and you have come here, and there are, the crumbs have fallen for us here, give me my part. Then we are told that Jesus looked at the woman and said, woman, you have great faith. Your faith is great. And we are told that the daughter was healed at that moment. The, the story is a moving one. Uh, let us have a look at only the woman and not everything about her, just a few thoughts. I'll just, uh, we study this one. Uh, as for Jesus, we know much about him his capabilities and what he came to do, how powerful he was. He is able to do all things. But let's look at this woman, beginning with the address that she addressed our Lord Jesus Christ. She addressed Jesus Christ as Lord and Son of David. That, those two words alone show that she had faith in Jesus as somebody God has sent. Because not Everybody could get those titles. To call somebody Lord, and more so to add son of David, perhaps it will be next to blasphemy if you didn't believe the person was. It's God sent. And so this woman was a woman of faith, even though she was a Canaanite. That is the first point. Sometimes people who are spiritual, so to say, like ourselves, Christians, we are so spiritual to the extent that sometimes there are certain things around us that we overlook. And sometimes what fools this one rather is when we are prejudiced against them. Oh, they are Gentiles. They are dogs. You can easily overlook their, their, their needs. But this woman will not allow Jesus Christ to go, to go away without getting what she wanted. So she had faith. That is the first one. And the next one that I want to draw attention to is uh, the kind of language that she used, even under provo provocation. Because I believe that any of us here will have been provoked to react differently. If I come to you to ask for something I know you can provide, if you will not give it to me, why insult me? Perhaps he would have seen the other side of us, the other side, not the Christian part of it, the other side of us. And uh, our reaction would have been different. But listen to how the woman composed herself, or look at how she composed herself. 
always acknowledging the Lordship of Jesus Christ and humbling herself to the extent that this was manifest in the way she spoke, her language. These two things, her faith and then the language that he spoke, even under provocation. And I think these are things that we should or we can learn from, even though she is a Canaanite, yes. But if there's something good about a Canaanite, it is what it is. We should say it as it, as it, as it, was, as it is. Just as Jesus Christ considered and saying that, woman, you're great, you, you have great faith, and uh, gave her what she needed. The daughter, who was terribly distressed by the demons, received deliverance. Hallelujah. Faith and our language. These two. And perhaps we need to encourage ourselves to maintain our faith in Jesus Christ. And in fact, our faith in Jesus must be strengthened from time to time. How do we do that? Maintaining good relations through Bible study, through prayer, and applying these in our lives. Situations will arise that will give us the opportunity for our faith to be strengthened. In fact, it's, if you don't practice your faith, it, ne it never grows. It's only as you practice it, as you put it into action. When you are provoked, when things are difficult, then you still maintain your faith. Those are the times that your faith grows. Uh, a faith which is lying idle can never grow. In fact, any part of a human being which is not used, we are told, will either diminish or fossilize. It will be weak. One would have thought that if you reserved your strength there, well, it's not doing anything, you grow strong. Rather, if you refuse to work, you rather grow weak. The same thing applies to our faith. Let us apply our faith in our daily life situations. Faith should not only be kept in the mind or in our heads. Oh, I'm a Christian. Which is very easy to do or say. But if you are a Christian, perhaps let us not see it in what you tell us. Let us see it in what we see you doing. And especially during times of hardships like the woman faced. I have a daughter terribly distressed by demons. That woman in that situation was actually distressed. But yet, the kind of faith she had in the man he has heard is the son of David. And perhaps they have, she has heard a lot of them, a lot of Jesus Christ about the healings and all the wonderful things that he's been doing in Israel. She submitted. She applied her faith. He came to Jesus Christ. He laid bare, she laid bare her needs before Jesus and waited for, her, for his response. And that is the way we apply your faith. You come to Jesus Christ in prayer with your needs and you wait until he has responded the way you want it. If this woman had quickly turned, turned away after coming initially with that plea, Lord, son of David, help me, and Jesus knowing her to be a Canaanite did not answer anything, Perhaps we thought that the disciples would come in to ask it were urge Jesus Christ to do something for the woman. Just send her away. She's been inconveniencing us. She's crying. Wherever we go, she follows us and is making some noise. Send her away. What will have been our response or reaction? But this woman, the Canaanite, stood still in faith. She waited on Jesus Christ until her needs were met. That also is applying our faith. It's not praying today and you get the results. If it happens that way, fine. But we all know that it doesn't always that way. Sometimes you'll have to pray and work and do all sorts of things until the time the Lord himself wants to. Then he will respond to your prayer the way he wants it. And so let us learn from the faith of this Canaanite woman. We have faith. Let's build on it. 
as we continue to interact with Jesus Christ in prayer and study and applying whatever we learn from him in our daily lives. We will not wait to apply our faith when we go to heaven. We will not need that. We will not need that one in heaven. Our faith must be applied here on this earth before we can go to heaven. So there's no need keeping faith in the head and refusing to apply it. It answers nothing. It's only when they are applied here that it becomes beneficial. The more importantly, it grows and gets strengthened. You are now better equipped to stand in the, in the face of other challenging moments whenever the faith is strong. And then the second one, her language. Every time that I talk about language, <laughs> it becomes something that uh, is difficult to talk about because the things or the words that we hear around us sometimes, and especially coming from people who are prominent in society, they might be uh, perhaps Christians or men of God or whoever. Sometimes they could be politicians high up there. You don't expect some certain language from them, irrespective of the provocation. There are many occasions that I will have to switch off the television or the radio because I think things are going the way they shouldn't go. Sometimes you are ashamed of yourself. And if this is the kind of nation that we are building, we want the children to learn from the adults. And then the adults speak in this way, and the children learn. Then what will be the future? How will the future look like? I think we are too careless in our nation about how we speak. And for us as Christians, perhaps let us be good examples. Even under provocation, let us be good examples. The woman waited patiently. She endured the pain. She's a human being. She might have endured it. But because of her faith, she stood still until she got what she wanted. I believe that the situation that we are going through as a nation is not one that not, does not exist anywhere. Comparatively, we have even been told that perhaps ours is better. But unfortunately, perhaps we have not gone through it before or we refuse to see it. We think things are so bad. Yes, indeed they are bad. But we need to work at it with our faith so we can help improve matters. Speaking the way we do, pardon me, doesn't mean everybody speaks so negatively. That's not what I mean. But I believe you will understand what I say when I say that the language being used on our airwaves and in our country sometimes very disturbing. And I think that myself and you as Christians must learn lessons from this woman so that as we pray to God and insist for what we are praying for, he will look at us in pity and also speak to us, woman, man, Ghanaian, your faith is great. So that whatever we lack, whatever we need will be granted. May the Lord himself help us as we think about this very short passage and reflect on it very positively. Let us not always be like the disciples. For them, send her away. Sometimes that is what happens. If you are not careful, you will be like, uh, uh, how did Jesus initially treated a woman? Oh, we don't do it that way. He's done that first. But if you are insistent, we will get what we want. May the Lord himself help us to stand in faith and avoid all the negativities and insist on the right thing. Trust him that our God will grant us our wishes at the right time. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, our word abideth, and our footsteps guideth, who is
his truth be me, he bad light and joy receive. Let us pray at this time, thanking God for his word. I know it is just a reminder of what we know already. Let us allow the words of scripture that are spoken to us this morning go deep into our souls. Especially for us as Christians, like the disciples. Submit and allow ourselves to be influenced by these words. There are people in need, like the, somebody, uh, the, the, this Canaanite woman. She was seriously in need. And she did the right thing, going to the Lord and Master, the son of David, who could help her. There are so many people in need around us whose needs sometimes we, see, uh, we tend to overlook. Let us pray to God that he would open our eyes to the needs and challenges of others. So that we can offer them our helping hand where we can or we are able to. Pray for the sick. Many people in very serious conditions in various hospitals and in the homes. Pray for the wayward children on our streets. Pray to God for them. Many of the challenges will have been self-inflicted. Yet let us pray for them. Others are not self-inflicted, but they are victims of circumstances. So let us not put a blind eye to their concerns. Perhaps you yourself have a challenge this morning, pray to God, like the woman did. You may have prayed for a very long time about it, about it and, and seem to see no headway. Pray to God and wait. Believe in trusting that you will receive the positive response that you need. Pray, bring your challenge to God. It is about health. Is it a financial thing? Whatever it is. Let's pray to God. Trust him. That he will respond at the right time. We thank you, Father, for this wonderful day. This wonderful Wednesday. The first Wednesday of this eighth month, we are grateful to you for bringing us this far. And Father, we look to you for your continued protection and guidance, even as we move along. But we pray that you bring us closer to yourself so that we can enjoy all the blessings that you have provided for us. Again, we pray for our nation that you yourself will intervene in a way that Ghana will continue to be a blessed and a prosperous land. We pray for faith, especially for the people of faith in our country, and that this faith that we profess to have will be applied in our daily lives. We pray that our lips will speak only that which edifies and will not allow the provocations or the challenges that we go through to influence the language we speak that are counterproductive. Rather, grant the soothing words so that even our needs and challenges will be met by you. 
So we commit ourselves to your care throughout this holy day. Protect us and take care of us in our goings out and in. Guide us in every decision and step that we take. We trust in your presence around us. So we thank you that you have brought us to the end of the day peacefully. We thank you for hearing our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
fellowship of Jesus Christ. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.